Hi, I'm Tom Cherryums with the FujiNet Project. We've had a number of people ask us how FujiNets can coexist with existing physical drives, such as this Atari 1050 here. So we decided to take and make a video. In this video, we'll actually cover how physical drives can coexist with the FujiNet, how to configure the FujiNet to coexist with the physical drives, and we'll do an example of copying an existing game disk from long ago onto the FujiNet for backup. Before we begin, I suggest updating your FujiNet firmware to the, late list, to the latest nightly build. You have a link for that in the description. Now, how are drives represented on the FujiNet? The FujiNet, to the least of the Atari, presents eight virtual drives, D1 to D8. If you have physical drives, you can configure the physical drives to essentially take the place of one of those eight slots. Most Atari floppy drives have drive selector switches on the back of the unit which can take and configure for drive one to drive four, anywhere in between. In that case, the idea is you use the physical drive there and you don't put anything in the virtual drive in the FujiNet. How do we take and hook up a physical drive to our FujiNet? On the front of the FujiNet, there is actually a connector that you can use to connect serial I.O. cable, just like with your disk drives, up to the FujiNet. It just goes in like so. The other thing that we have to make sure, we need to go into the web UI and make sure that status weight is enabled. If we look at the web UI here, we can scroll down to the very bottom. And we can see that there is an enable status weight routine here with the option to take and turn it on for yes and for no. If we look at the help for it, it says uh, disabling SIO status weight will cause FujiNet to not wait for other devices to answer the operating system status call. For example, a real D1 floppy drives. We need this switch for certain cases because, for example, Sparta DOS X doesn't play very nice with this feature. If you need Sparta DOS X, then you can disable this feature. We're not going to use it here, and we want to coexist with the existing drive, so we'll keep it on right here. In addition, if you don't need the config boot disk entirely, you can take and enable or disable this entirely and this is especially handy if you just want to use the FujiNet tools themselves to take and do all of your slot management. With that said, let's go ahead and look at our Atari display. Right now we're in config and we're going to set up a couple of things here. First and foremost, actually, actually let's do this a little differently. Let's take this disk right here. This game disk from long ago, which has some of my favorite games in it here. We'll put it in drive one. And we will configure the Atari 1050 drive to be drive one. That means that there should not be anything in slot one here. Okay, great. Let's reset the FujiNet and let's cold start the machine. And you'll see that the 1050 drive has taken over and it is loading our games here. So you see, you can indeed 
use Atari 1050 as drive one. It works just fine. But we want to take and actually copy this disk over onto the FujiNet. No problem. All we need to do for that, we'll take and put the Atari display out for a moment here. And we will reconfigure the drive to be drive two. So now the 1050 is drive two and the FujiNet will be drive one. And when we turn on the FujiNet, we will find <clears throat> the FujiNet takes over, boots as drive one into FujiNet config. Let's set up some things. We'll start by grabbing a sector copier off of apps.errata.online because I want to copy this disk exactly. This disk is not copy protected, so I can use any typical sector copier to do the job. I'm going to use sector copier 810. I'm going to put it in drive one so that it boots. Then I'm going to take and go to my SD card. I have an SD card in my FujiNet. We're going to use new in. We're going to create a new 90K disk. And since it was called Tom's Fave Games, I'm going to call it that here too. .atr. We're going to place that in drive three. Recall that the 1050 is configured as drive two. So the sector copier is going to boot and then we're going to tell the sector copier to copy from drive two to drive three. We'll put this in slot three as read write. And there's our setup. See here that we have sector copier in drive one. Drive two is empty because the 1050 is taking over that duty. And drive three is our favorite games. We'll go ahead and boot. Holding down option so that basic gets disabled. And our sector copier is now loaded. The source drive is our 1050 here, which is configured as drive two. Our destination drive is drive three, which is our disk image, which we can see. I'll, I'll put this up here just so you can see. Lot three is our disk image. Lot two is our 1050. And we want to copy all the sectors, so use the defaults. Number of copies, one. We don't need to verify rights. It'll make this go faster. Uh, we don't need to format destination. And sure, writing blank sectors isn't going to matter. So yes, boom. OK, insert the disks. And now we can press Start. And you can hear it copying from the floppy drive.
We're now on the last leg of the copy. And there we go. The copy is now complete. We can now take the 1050 drive, remove the disk from the drive. We're done with it. Put it away. And we can now take and test it. How do we test it? Well, we have the 1050 still on here. We don't really need it though. We just hit the reset button and reset our machine. We'll go back into the FujiNet configuration menu. And all we really need to do, eject, eject, and we can go to our SD card. Find our disk image that we've created. Mount it read only. And boot it, holding down the option key. And there it is, ready to go. You can take and boot a game. And it works just as the original floppy did. There we go. So that pretty much ends this video here. I hope this video has been informative. If there are any other topics you'd like me to cover, please feel free to leave in the comments, contact me on Facebook, or contact us in the Discord. Until next time, guys. Have fun.